Welcome to the Macros for Life podcast, where we talk all things macros, business, and marriage. We are your hosts, Eve and Randall Guzman. Visit our website at www.gtransformationacademy.com, where you can download our free How to Track Macros guide. This guide has helped over 15,000 people start their macro tracking journey. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Macros for Life podcast. Today, Randall and I have a conversation to share with you that was so good when we hosted our friend Aram, whose Instagram handle is four weeks to the beach in our macro mentorship monthly call. It's our certification program for coaches who want to build the utmost confidence with macros and also get mentorship and group business coaching that we had to share it with you. This meeting with our coaches that we had originally planned to just have privately with the ROM was so good that we had to share it with you because all of the hard truths that he brings in this segment, talking about the coaching industry on the other end of being coachable and then on the end of actually being a coach. And it was so good. We just had to share it with you guys. So we hope you enjoy this episode. But welcome, you guys. I'm glad you guys are here. We've got a good turnout. There's a few more people coming in now. Um, I don't know if there's anybody on here that doesn't know who you are and I don't want to say that and you feel like oh my gosh but I don't know if there's anybody on here that doesn't know who you are and I know a lot of you guys I'm looking through the names here a bunch of you guys got to meet him last month right somebody just typed in the chat yeah He's you got to meet you got to meet a form of me I was a little bit all over the place yeah 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 you guys might have only gotten like one minute with him because he put on an, a, in an incredible event um with the lead up since what September or October last year yeah it was I a long stop, road I gotta stop planning shit that far in advance <laughs> it was okay I think it was I think it was fine I mean it was a big event very first one and so if you guys don't um, know Rom, you're going to find out a lot about him today. But we met online just last year, and I feel like I am so lucky now to have you as one of my friends. And saying the word friend, I don't, I don't take this light, lightly um, at all. We met online because I think somebody suggested that I go live with you. And I had been following you for like a year, year and a half, and I was like, Who's this dude? It's like four weeks to the beach. I don't even think you had your photo up maybe at one point. I was like, I don't know what he looks like, but I just see this bathroom every day. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep following because he's like saying this stuff that's like super powerful. And we'll get to like all these like really potent and deep conversations and stuff that you have. But then we went live together and then the event and stuff came up. And then I got to meet with him and hang out at another event before this one. And so I've gotten to know him a lot and you guys have probably heard me say it before, but I do feel like he is my brother from a different mother, obviously. <laughs> um, but he's a really awesome guy. My husband's like, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so tell so, us about you and how you got started in this space. And then we'll break into wherever the conversation goes. Yeah. I'm not going to bore you folks. I know you probably have much more important stuff to do than talk about me. So uh, ex-finance person, uh, worked in kind of uh, worked in the finance space for six years out of college. Um, very origin story, immigrant from Russia. So kind of had that mentality throughout my life. Parents were always kind of behind the eight ball financially. So finance was going to be the way that was going to get us out of the basement. And uh, I realized very quickly that it was just wasn't for me. So I my passion has always been like fitness and health, even though my blatant drug use in my 20s was a, a pretty anticipatory. Uh, anticip yeah, anticipatory. Wow, I can't speak of fitness and health because in finance, all you really do is work super long hours, drink a lot, do a lot of drugs, don't eat anything. And I just realized that like, I cannot keep doing this. I don't love it. It sucks. I'm making money for somebody else. I started rolling towels for eight bucks an hour at an Equinox in Greenwich, Connecticut. 
got my first training job that way. And then the, that was basically history. I went online in 2019 and then I moved to California in 2021 and have been almost solely remote since then. I still have a few people I see in person, but uh, as Eve knows, I have a very particular disdain for this industry as it's starting to get split between influencers and educators. And I'm trying to keep things on the educator space. So that people, lay folks, get the right information so they stop being lied to and stop being sold bullshit. And that's why we're here. That's definitely why we're here. <laughs> so tell us about your handle. I know not everybody knows the story behind the handle that you chose. Tell us about <laughs> it. So you met Allie Gilbert, finally. Um, first person to tell me was the stupidest name ever was Allie Gilbert. It's like, this is stupid. It's not going to work. It's it's ridiculous. I said, Ali, I respect you a lot in this business, but let me try this my way once. And I stuck with it. So the, the theory behind four weeks to the beach is basically it's not this promise that you're going to get in great shape in four weeks. I think we all know that my messaging is completely the, the opposite of that. But it is the idea that if you live your life in a perpetually solid level of maintenance of habits, that if you have something that you want to amplify your efforts for that's in a short time away, you don't have to completely overhaul everything. And I always think about it in the context of like, oh, I'm going to Cancun in May and I need to get in really good shape for Cancun. And meanwhile, I have 90 pounds to lose. Well, it's probably not going to happen. Um, but if you're living a solid lifestyle all the damn time and then all of a sudden you either have to take your shirt off or something or you have to take photos for something or you just want to feel more confident in your own skin or whatever it is, I don't care what it is. I don't mind vanity goals. Um it just helps you ratchet things up. It's a bit of a dangling carrot. So you can just kind of amplify your efforts a little bit and get that much closer to something that's a bit more refined in that in that space of time. But it's not this like ridiculous promise. And that's really what it is. Is there anybody that DMs you and asks you, what does it mean? Or is this a program that gets me ready in a month? I've never actually had been asked if it's going to actually work in four weeks, but I've had a lot of people say, well, your messaging is very much long-term based. So why is your handle so the anti that I said, I don't know, it probably it might name, make for a good book name at some point. Good. Um, it's a very easy way to stand out. I don't know. It's long, it's obnoxious. And now that I have a poser online, that's four weeks to the beach with T H a in it. Um, and apparently somehow his account's not getting taken down. He's got like 10,000 followers already. What? I saw yeah, you talk insane. about that. It's insane. I don't know how these phantom accounts get more followers than I could have amassed in eight years in like oh two weeks. Oh my gosh. So yeah, um, if you guys can go report that page, please. If you get some time today, if you can do whatever. it, it tomorrow it, and Wednesday. <laughs> if you get a if you get a DM from an account that doesn't have all the same stuff that mine does, it's not me. Karen just said he sends me messages yeah. all the time. Yeah. Now, what meanwhile, I will I will respond to messages, but I'm not just actively pursuing messaging people. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's nuts! That's nuts. So what was it like when you went online, when you uh, started to take your business online? What was that like? Was it overwhelming? Did you love it? Did it feel weird? Did you miss people or no? <laughs> no, I had gotten to the end of my rope with people, to be honest with you, because I think when you're an online, when you're an in-person trainer, especially in the demographic that I was serving, I was serving a very high ticket, very, very um, affluent, typically women uh, you know, stay at home moms that whose husbands were working on Wall Street. So that was who I was serving. And those women were treating me as a hair appointment. So mm -hmm. essentially, they were they were 10 minutes late, they were running out 10 minutes early. They weren't paying attention. They were venting for 45 or 50 minutes about bullshit in their life. And they didn't really care about what was being done in that session. So I quickly learned how to fill the role of psychologist first, and then trainer second. And I realized that unless I can control somebody's entire environment, or at least help control their environment with the other lifestyle stuff, there's not going to be many results happening in a three hour, which ended up really being probably like 68 minutes of training in a three day session a week. They, all of that work is just being unraveled with the poor eating or the not eating or the overeating, the drinking, the sleep, the, the, the steps, all the other functionality pieces that we always talk about. And I'm just like, I can't change people's lives training them in person. And I only have so many hours a day. And by the seventh or eighth session of the day, I have nothing left personally. Like I just, I don't have, I can't be pleasant. I can't be nice anymore. Um, I used to get really snippy um, at a point where 
you know, like by the seventh or eighth session at night where I, at 6 p.m. and somebody's coming in, like they're dragging ass, they're pissed off, they're going through the motions. And I'm like, what the hell? Why, you know, why can't I, why can't you perform for me? Like, and I just realized that most people don't give a shit enough to learn about what you're trying to tell them. And they just want to be put through the motions. And I don't like that. Um, so I decided to go online. I went through NCI level one and two. I got precision level one. And I all see it in October of 2019. I still had most of my clients in person. I was doing seven to eight sessions a day, seven days a week, all cash. And I was killing it. It was COVID. All the gyms were closed. We kept a little gym open in like an industrial park in Stanford, Connecticut. People were coming in like we were just locking the front door. We told all the cops that if they wanted to, to come in whenever, they would never break our balls. So I was I was probably the busiest trainer in the, the Southern Connecticut area because I just had all my clients leave this private facility that I was working for because they basically shut down and went to Beachbody, which is a whole other story that I have a complete distaste for. Um, and they sold out and they were like, well, we can't keep servicing people in person, so we'll go online. And I I wanted I don't I didn't mind the online space. I just didn't like the way it was being done because a lot of it was MLM. A lot of it was just like challenges and 12 week transformations, as opposed to like, here's an education. Here's how you apply this stuff after your coaching relationship is over. There was none of, there was not a lot of that happening yet. Mm -hmm. um, I still see a couple of people in person now. And let's just say this out of the four people I see in person, one of them is making some type of strides in the right direction. The other three are still going through the motions because the problem is, is I don't control the other stuff. We don't, right. I can't have, I can't have an impactful conversation about sleep or uh you know soft tissue work for orthopedic injuries or food quality with somebody who's stressed out over caffeinated up late overwhelmed trying to rush through a session they just they're not gonna they're not mentally ready to sit down and hear what i have to say so they don't give a shit um as opposed to my online clients who have accountability who have a form to fill out who have food to log who have videos to send me who have me as as a as a forum to reach out to we're having conversations with on a daily basis. We're getting reminders on a weekly basis. So there's just a lot more touch, you know, touch points with people. And 90% of the time, we're just a reminder anyway. Mm, yeah. Do you feel like, and this is what I might be thinking. Do you feel like your experience in personal training, those seven to eight clients per day has really led to a lot of the content that you put out now? It's almost like, I'm almost now thinking like thinking about your page and your content that's on your posts, the ones that are on your stories. It's almost like a book of experiences from you coaching. That's what it seems like now. Every single tile that I create, I'm usually about two weeks ahead. Um, mm -hmm. nights, nights that I can't sleep, I'll just sit on the couch and I'll just think of client bullshit. Mm -hmm. I'll just think of something that Mrs. Jones said that pissed me off, something that she said that was poignant, something that she said that bothered her or bothered me. And I just put it into thought. And luckily, somehow, I don't know how, as English was my second language, I became a decent writer. Um, and I just realized that Instagram is not a place where you can really educate completely, but you can at least provide food for thought. And if you give people snippets of something to think about, maybe they spring into action. And I can't tell you how many people I've had to reach out to me over the last two years who were like, I've been following you for two years. I have no coach, but just with the advice that you've given, I've been able to lose 20 or 30 pounds. And I think I'm in it for the long game now. And I'm not worried about the scale and my body image has changed. And I'm like, Jesus, I mean, that's what it's all about. Like, I don't have to coach everybody. And I don't want to coach everybody. Half the time I'm selling people out of coaching anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I had a woman reach out to me the other day and she like adamantly wanted me to work with her. And I'm like, I don't, I think you need a therapist. I don't think you need a coach. Like, I don't know that I would be able to help you. I think your 200 bucks a month would be better spent on somebody that's a mental health professional that can help you with your relationship with food and your body image and all of your stuff that you got going on, because you know, everything there is to know about nutrition and fitness, almost to the point where you can be a coach. Um, and she thanked me and sent me this really nice note afterwards. And she's like, I'm going to go work with a therapist. And that's where she is now. But you know, we can't help everybody. And Less so can we help people that don't want to be helped. Like, I don't give a shit if you're motivated by something I read because by, by day three of reading that, you're it's gone. Like, you don't yep. think about that. Because then your kids are annoying, your job sucks, you're in a fight with your husband, you've forgotten about that little bit of motivation that I gave you three days ago. But if it inspires you to change something, 
because I don't motivation and inspiration to me are two completely different things. I like to inspire thought. I don't want to motivate. Like I'm not a rah rah. Like let's go get after it. I, even people I used to train in person were like, "You're the most boring trainer on earth." I'm like, yeah. If you want to fucking get go get yelled at, go like you know go hire one of these like 22 year olds up behind the ears who are like all excited still to be alive. Like I've been through the motions. I know that that's not going to help you. And if it does, then maybe I'm not the trainer for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So I haven't seen your account past two years ago because that's about how long I've been following you. Um, how did your account look when it first started? Did you have photos? I mean, I've <laughs> scrolled way back. I don't know uh, if people that deleted the back in the day. It's fucking embarrassing is what it is. What it's, year did you start a, your account? So my buddy from Miami, who's my one of my best friends, he's a photographer. He's just very, very large, beautiful, gay black man. And um, he's like, bro, you got to get on Instagram. Like everybody's on Instagram. I'm like, okay, sure. Um, I started in 2015. I was single. I was like 30, whatever that was, 31, 32. And all I cared about was just attention, like shirtless pictures, shirtless videos, like look at me do this. And it was such stupid waste of time, ridiculous, like the rest of the internet content. And then I realized I'm like, I'm not helping anybody with this. Nobody's getting anything from me other than just like seeing my nipples every once in a while. And this is stupid. <laughs> so I started to just kind of go down the road of like, what are my, what are my clients talking about? What is their problems? These are real people with real problems. Maybe it will resonate with somebody else. And I just started making these like little Adobe Photoshop tiles I use whatever it used to be called spark post. I think now it's called Adobe, whatever. And I just started posting that. And all of a sudden it just started taking off because it was shareable. It was easy bite size. It was easy to remember. It was easy to kind of spread. And, and then I started realizing, I'm like, well, maybe people want to hear from other coaches. Cause a lot of times when you keep saying the same thing over and over again, your, your clients shut down, but if they hear it from another coach, maybe that'll resonate more with them because it's a message that they can hear. So then I started inviting people on and then it became that thing. Um, and then Jimmy and I met and then Jimmy and I started the podcast. And basically that was just an extension of all that. So yeah, I mean, the content that I was putting out early on was it's embarrassing to the point where I want to leave it up as a harsh reminder to other coaches to not do that. Um, and that, even now, like when I, I'm, I'm not, I'm a, the last thing I am as a business mentor, because Lord knows I, I, I'm not anywhere near the level of business acumen that I would need to run a more successful business, but I really don't care to do so either. But like anybody that's ever asked me, like, what should I be doing online? I'm like, just be authentic and help people somehow. That is it. Like nobody needs to see another chick with a nice ass. Nobody needs to see another dude with nice shoulders. Like we get it. Like nice physiques exist. How does that video help the end user? Like we don't need another like pointing at this and how many calories I eat in a day. Like none of that shit's helping anybody. It might help a tiny subset of the population, but by and large, the average person is just missing a big chunk of the basic information. So feed that to them on a daily basis. I don't give a shit if you have to say it a thousand times. Make them understand why water is important. Make them understand why eating out of a box in a bag is bad. Like that's all. That's it's literally that easy. And just don't overcomplicate it and be yourself. <laughs> it couldn't be any easier than that. We have a question here. Ooh, when it's too complicated, or you just say F it and put, throw it up anyway. <laughs> as, as far as what? As far as like content? Yeah. So, oh, you're saying, oh, you're saying when it comes to IG, how do you decide when it's too complicated? Oh, okay. And it'll be this four hour conversation, but your average person who's trying to disseminate information, just tell them that the metabolism is something that adapts and adjusts with your behavior. It's not broken. You're not broken. It's not something that you need to fix like a tire it either is going to respond or react and that's about the best we can do. Boom. That's Done. like your exact example of a post. Yeah. Like that's literally, I mean, you just, you just, the way that you would explain it to your grandmother, a person that just got off the boat from a different country that doesn't know how to speak English or like a seven-year-old who's thinking about 45 other different things. Two thirds of Americans don't exercise at all. That's insane to me. That's two, it's almost 250 million people that aren't moving their body intention. Mm -hmm. Of course, they don't know what the, the value of any of like basic nutrition is. And if you look around, like I even just in my social circle here in San Diego, people look at us like we're insane. Like my girlfriend and I, because we're prepping our food on the weekends, we're not eating out every single meal Monday, you know, Friday through Sunday. 
we're exercising, we're taking our dogs for a walk, we're not drinking all weekend long. And it's like, we're the weird ones. But then I look at the same people who are doing all that same shit every weekend that are constantly talking about oh, I'm pinching parts of their body and saying that they need to lose fat. When they're saying that their only modality of exercise is yoga, and then they drink two to three bottles of wine twice a week. And that, but that's the average. That's the absolute, like, that is the average human being. Of course, there's, it's not a surprise to me that people are fucked up and their mindset is broken. Their systems don't work. They keep relying on these crazy diets that have no end date and no real organization to them. They don't want to build muscle mass because it's too scary to do that. So there's all this misinformation that still exists. So I don't care how loud and how consistently all of the good ones are saying it. It's never going to go on deaf ears because somebody's going to need to hear that. Yeah, right. Because the ma overwhelming majority still doesn't understand this stuff. Like we, I think because we're connected to one another on Instagram, we have this tiny little world that we live in, and we're like, oh, well, we have these thousand or two thousand people we're connected to, and they're all very like minded. Cool. What happens with the like? Just walk, go into any store, any go walk through the airport, go to a Walmart, go to your grocery store, and see what people are putting in their carts. Like, I look at that shit all the time and it's insane to me. Like, I wouldn't, I just would, like, to me, I would have to be so high and so drunk to fill my cart with the stuff that people are putting in their carts that it would be unreal. <laughs> it's like, true. I, I, you ever do it's, that? Like, do you check out and then look at other people's carts? I see old well, ladies with seven bottles of wine, cat food, <laughs> cereal, and cans of tuna. And that, I wish it was cans of tuna for them. It's probably for their cats. <laughs> like shit, I I eat two cans of tuna a day. <laughs> and and when they look at what we're doing, they say it's restrictive. And and to them, it probably is. Um, if anybody hasn't watched the whale yet, please watch it. Um, I'd be very curious to see if anybody has seen it. What their thoughts are. One girl reached out to me on Instagram after I posted about watching it. And she's like, that's fat shaming porn. How dare you watch that and support it? I'm like, you can find a reason to blow anything up. When you're 21 years old and you're in a nutrition, you're, she's in like she's a, she's like a master student for nutrition somewhere. And she's like, she sends me all this dumb shit on a daily basis. She's like, you're the reason why. I'm like, why are you following me still? Just unfollow me if you don't like what I'm saying. Just unfollow me. She's like, no, because we need to get rid of people like you. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, you and everybody else. I'm like, I'm saying the whale was an amazing movie because it shows the lengths that human beings will go to to punish themselves because they don't feel valuable. That's really, that was what I got out of that movie. I didn't get anything out of, of it from an obesity epidemic problem. It wasn't like this period piece about what's going on in society. It's just about a broken man who had a bunch of shitty things happen to him. He didn't know how to cope with them and he used food as his coping mechanism. That's it. Look at it as that. And then, holy shit, that's me. That's how I, I relate to that because that's what I do. Maybe I do it with booze. Maybe I do it with drugs. Maybe I do it with personal relationships and I lean on things. This guy leaned on food. And as the movie got progressively through it, and as he started to reveal more and more of his pain, he ate more and more of it. And, you know, it's just, it's to me, like that was such a strong mental health movie, not an obesity movie. And I think that's where most people lies. They just adults who don't take responsibility for their shortcomings. And I'm sorry, like there's, there's mental health resources now out there that are free. They're free. Like people are giving away counseling. If you're not taking advantage, and by the way, if you have a if you have one of these, you have a hundred dollars to spend on somebody that's going to help you with your brain, and and you should be exhausting every resource you possibly can because if you're forty and still believe that you don't belong here, that you should be a certain size, or that your parents fucked you up, if you're still blaming shit on your parents at forty, like get like wake up, your parents are almost dead. You can, how long are you going to carry that with you for? Like my father and I hated each other for years. I got over that very quickly. Him and I are best friends now, I'm like, but it took me time to, to deal with it. So I think there's a lot of people walking around with a lot of unnecessary baggage and they're using all of these amazing things like food that's so readily available to us. And I, you know, and then they label themselves with these disorders and it's like, I am a binge eater. So stop waving that flag. I mean, that's what I think our, like a lot of our clients are dealing with this stuff and they're, and they're, they've been told by the medical system that they're broken you're over 40. It's over for you. You're in menopause. That's it. Forget it. Your body's gone. You have no capability. Why even bother? Or, you know, you have a heavy period. So just take as much birth control as your body can possibly handle. Um, oh, you're overweight. Your BMI is too high. Cool. Eat less and move more because clearly that works really well for everybody since you've already, you haven't asked me any questions about what I do now. 
So we have all this conflicting, awful information everywhere by people that are professionals, like people that we value as human beings with credibility. And that's the sad part to me is that lab coats and all this other stuff is, is what's is what's running the informational business. And then we're looked at as as silly or as ineffective because we don't have these credentials and we don't have this credibility, whereas we're making the biggest impact because we're talking to these people every single day. I mean, I spent 30 minutes on the phone with a woman that I have in Vegas where we just we she was crying and just was like, I don't want to track food anymore because it makes me this. I'm like, then don't worry about that. It's not you're not upset because you're tracking food. You're upset about the information that you're gathering by tracking food. Yeah. You're seeing what you're eating and you're having to own it. And that's the hard part. Maybe facing that is what you have to do. Maybe facing it and being uncomfortable and sitting with it and being like, why do I have to eat five Reese's peanut butter cups in a row when I know I don't even want the first one? So it's not the food tracking that's the problem. It's your relationship with this entire process that's the issue. And we have to talk about that. I don't give a fuck about you losing weight. I just want you to get your head right because once you get your head right, your body will follow. That's the easy part. The macros and the training is easy. It's so simple. Like it's it's literally just math equations. There's nothing to it. Eat this much, do this much. That's it. But it's how are you actually looking at it? Like if you're stepping on the scale and wanting to like murder yourself every single day, then don't step on the scale for a while. What's going to really change if you're up five or down six? If the, nobody, literally zero people on the planet notice that. So what's the point? And I think getting like, these are the conversations as coaches we should be having like with our end users, because like I go to a gym, that's all bodybuilders. They care about angles and the amount of protein they should eat five minutes after a workout. Those people for them, sure. It matters. But if you're 48 years old and you've struggled with, with losing weight 17 different times and your mother was on Weight Watchers and she fucked you up with all the shit that she did. And now you're installing all that garbage onto your children. Is that how you want to leave? Like, that's the legacy you want to leave? Is like, my mother fucked me up for the rest of my life because she couldn't handle her demons? Like, you owe it to the rest of the people in your life to do that. It's not about losing fat. It's about losing that mindset of, like, this is the only way to do it. I think you, like, dropped 10,000 bombs. <laughs> I'm like, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. I mean, literally everything he said was, like, 17 posts. How many people that come to work with you say, I want to work with you, I want to do whatever, but I don't want to track? What percentage do you think tell you they don't want to track? I don't really give them a choice because to me, it's information. Like the way that I look at it is if I walk to, if, if I have, if I suspect that I have cancer and I walk into my doctor's office, what do they, what do they have? Hey, doc, just look at me and let me know, do I have cancer? It's like, no, we have to do blood work. We have to do all sorts of diagnostic work. Tracking food is a diagnostic tool to me. If you don't know what you're eating, how am I supposed to help you? Like we sometimes we'll make regression. Sometimes we'll go, okay, track calories and protein only. And that only lasts for so long. Sometimes we go real far back and I say, take pictures of your food and send me a picture of every meal. But then again, we don't have any idea of how much of it we're eating, you know, what's what it's been prepared with. Like, so there's detail that's missing. If you're going to hire me and pay me whatever it is that I charge on a monthly basis, don't you want to get the best of me and get me and, and allow me to do my job to the completest and most fullest sense of my capability? Or do you want to get a portion of me? Because if you want general advice, you don't have to pay for that. That's easy. Eat more protein, eat more vegetables, eat more fruit, move your body more and sleep better. Don't stress. Okay, how far is that going to get you? At some point, we're going to need specifics. Mm -hmm. So for most people, one of the line items in my intake form is, are you willing and able to track food? Are you willing and able to send me videos of your last sets of your workouts? Are you willing and able to submit your check-in form on time? Are you willing and able to communicate with me if you need? And of course, everybody says yes to all those questions. And then three weeks into it, you know, I'm having to chase them for information. I'm seeing incomplete food logs. I'm not getting any workout videos. I'm not hearing anything about anything going wrong. Meanwhile, in their check-in form, it's like, well, my dog died and my grandmother's sick and I wasn't able to eat anything all week long. So it's like, why am I hearing about this seven days after it happened? Like, because some people just don't want to ask for help. Some people pay for a coach and they assume that there's going to be some magic that happens. And I tell everybody, I'm like, you are lucky enough to be working with a person that literally answers their phone all day long. Like I'm probably one of the only coaches out there that gives off their cell phone number and responds to texts in the most inopportune times. I'm giving feedback on videos at seven in the, in, at night on a Sunday afternoon. Like there's never a time where I'm not answering people. He's not never. lying. 
Not- and like, if you don't get a text back from me in 30 minutes, call the police. Like something has happened. I'm like been abducted. I'm in a different country. My liver is gone. Like I will answer you all the time. And the reality is, is because I owe it to every single paying customer because I don't give a shit again about the macros and the training. I care that they know that I care about them. Mm -hmm. I'm here for you. You hired me to do a service for you. I will perform that service until it kills me. And I promise you that. And most coaches will not do that. I may not be the best out there when it comes to protocols and information, but I am the best when it comes to personal relationships. And that's more than anything else. I know people that go to the same barber after the barber has fucked their haircut up 10 times and they still go there because they're boys. Like, yo, that that haircut is trash and you're still going back to this guy. He's like, yeah, that's my boy. I'm not going to like take money out of his pocket. And I get it. Like sometimes our clients will stay with us for years. Like I've had women that have gained weight with me and they didn't care. They were just happy to have that relationship. They were happy to know that somebody was there for them and supporting them throughout their journey, whether it was good or bad, because they stopped thinking about it as good or bad. They started enjoying the ride. Mm-hmm. Because they had a they had a they had some they had a co-pilot that was cool. And that was it. Like I'm happy with that. I'm not gonna I, I promise people jack shit. I'm like, you may not lose any weight at all. Because you there's a lot of stuff that you still have to learn as a precursor to that, as a prerequisite. But to me, it's much more valuable to be connected to the individual, to understand things about them. What's the relationship with their kids like? What is it? What are their, some of their past traumas? Like it really is psychology. And unfortunately, like, you know, I think who's who does a really good job of this is who stays within her scope, but actually goes above and beyond is Casey. Casey Joe or Vetus does an awesome job of talking about the mindset stuff. And she's kind of allowed me to understand that it's okay for me to talk about this stuff, even though I'm not credentialed in it, because it's such a, it's 95% of coaching is that personal piece is that understanding people's issues. It does, you know, what they know and don't know about insulin resistance doesn't make the impact what they don't know and know about themselves and why they do the things that they do. And revealing that stuff to them is massively influential. Can you share with the coaches on here? Um, the like demographics right now of your clientele and how much it's changed since you left in-person training who who Uh, do you get for clients the clientele hasn't changed much as far as demographics from who i work with it's always been primarily female and basically stayed that way i mean now it's almost the pendulum has swung like i have i can count on one hand how many guys i work with um and it's mostly, I mean, I think I'm, I think I'm up to like 70 people on remote and I think 65 of them are women and 65 of them are 35 plus. Yeah. Um, and though, but that to me is the most underserved community. That's the community that's being, you know, being completely sold to on a daily basis between the fat loss schemes and the products and everything else that's happening. Like this isn't like the only thing that being it's being sold to men is like boost your testosterone. And every guy's like, sweet. And it's like, just, just take five milligrams of Cialis and get on TRT. You'll be fine. Um, but for women, it's like, everything is broken without this shake or this tea or this pill or this powder. You're never going to get back to normal. Get your, get your pre-pregnancy body back within six weeks of doing this. It's like, that's so like, I know women who will literally spend, weeks trying to make the right decision on purchasing a vehicle or purchasing whatever but when they get told that at 10 o'clock at night that something is going to change them in six weeks they're like oh my god i have to sign up for this it's like why you're so intelligent and so reasonable in so many other avenues of your life and i understand why it's because it's a very emotional thing your body image is very emotional the way that you interact with yourself in in on an everyday life is is an emotional thing so when that trigger comes out you're like oh okay this is it this is it I'm, i know if i take raspberry ketones before every meal i'm going to be able to digest my carbohydrates better and all of a sudden my fat will fall off and all this muscle will be exposed and i'm going to look like the 24 year old me maybe the 24 year old you is off the table and i think having those conversations as uncomfortable as they are might be really important because a lot of times I'll get women who, like I had a woman yesterday who, who had three pregnancies back to back, I think within like whatever the natural lag timeline could have been. I think she had like three kids within four years. Like there, I think there might've been a couple of changes that happened in between that and now, like <laughs> do you really, do you really expect that like you at 27 with zero children 
is going to be you at 45 with three children and all the stuff you have on your plate. And if you really want to get back to that point, do you understand how awful your life is going to be? Do you understand how sacrificial you have to be? How you're going to have to take time away from everything that's important to you? How your, your relationship with your children will probably suffer. Your relationship with your spouse will probably suffer. Your work will suffer. Because the only thing that you'll be thinking about is your aesthetic. I don't think that's the life you want to live. Now, balance is clearly something that gets earned over time. But you have to at least be able to be uncomfortable in that period of time of learning about yourself and why you're doing this stuff. And then eventually the aesthetic comes. It's just a byproduct of doing the work. And I, that's the biggest thing that we have to convince people of is like, if you just keep doing this for X amount of years, however, just forget about the years, just keep doing it. At some point down the line, something will change and something will happen, but you can't like expect it to happen overnight. It doesn't happen in anything else you do. And if it does, you're just really lucky. Yeah, that um, percentage is extremely small. The luck well, it's, funny. Is, it's like it, almost non-existent. <laughs> it, it's it's such a tiny percentage, and it's 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 a subset of the population that I don't care to think about because it's not who I work with. It's not who needs help. Like I don't need to help the twenty three year olds at the gym. They're not the ones. A, they're not buying coaching because they don't have any money. This is why I've not gotten on TikTok. Like fuck TikTok. I don't need twenty year olds looking at my content. They can't afford me. They don't need my help. Um, now granted, I think there are adults on TikTok, but the way I look at TikTok is like, they're just mining our information and setting us up for an attack at some point. But, and I think Randall made a good point. Like, why don't men reach out for help? Men don't reach out for help because men are told that they don't, they're not allowed to reach out for help, that they're, you're supposed to button everything up. I can do something about it. And I just dedicated six months of work to doing something about it. And then it changed. But a lot of people are unwilling to do that. They don't want to read the books. They don't want to listen to the podcast. They don't want to accept that there's a, that there's help available. And half the time that they have help, they don't even ask for it anymore because they're so used to just internalizing all of it, plowing through it, letting it bubble up, and then having it spill over at some point. That's what we have to change. And we have to be able to make that that arena and that that opening very available for our clients to be able to share that information because that's going to be the stuff that unlocks all of their problems. But if you, you have to give them that chance to say it. Who are you think the top three people other than Eve? I don't. I mean, you go back. I would say just watch some of the lives that I've done and just go see who you resonate with and what type of information. Just I would say that before asking that question, ask yourself what do you, what information do you want to learn about? Like, what are you missing as a coach? Do you need more training acumen? There's great training accounts. Do you need more nutrition acumen? Do you need more? functional medicine acumen do you need more mindset acumen like find out those three those things that you're missing and then um then i would say if you still want and if you think of that just dm me and i'll and i'll be able to point you in the right direction but i think because there's a lot of people that are really good at what they do um and then there's some people that are just like i'm general like i i don't know everything about everything but i know a lot about a little um or a little about a lot and I'm fairly well-rounded, but when it comes to the specifics of stuff, there are resources that I go to. So just think of the stuff that you're missing as a coach, and then it, it helps narrow down that search a bit. Can you talk about um, lifting after 40 a little bit? Like I, you know, I've, I've been lifting pretty much like most of my life, except for the hiatus I took when I gained all the weight or whatever. But I really thought that I was different you know what I mean? Then people, people told me, you know, people always were like, were like, once you get 40, you know, things change this, that, and the other, but I was still deadlifting five, 500 pounds or whatever in the gym. Like it was whatever. And then I finally hurt myself and now, and then I had to change. So now I'm learning like how life after 40 and how to lift and it, how you have to concentrate more on form and lighter weights and this, that, and the other, and not as much, but can you talk about how you see it from that standpoint and how you maybe had to change? So the 30,000 foot view and the easiest way to answer that question is just understand that the human physiology becomes more frail as you age. I don't like saying it that way because that sounds shitty, but let's be honest. Every day that you're closer to death is one day that you're weaker somehow, whether it's you're less resilient to stress, your body can just handle less of a beating, your joints are just, just wear and tear in a car. Like how long are you going to keep a car for? Like, yeah, like a Subaru drives for... 200,000 miles, but it drove a lot better at 50,000 miles than it did at 150,000 miles. You start hearing the creeks, you start hearing all this stuff happening. Lower volume, higher intensity. Like don't train for as much, but 
but really train hard when you do. Like if you're going to deadlift, deadlift two sets. Warm up two or three sets with, let's say you're a 500 pound deadlift and you want to keep hitting PRs. Warm up with two, 300 pounds. Something that you know you can handle. Pay attention to your form, pay attention to your tempo. You know you're good at it. And then just keep blowing out the tank on your last two sets. But don't do, like, there, needs, there doesn't need to be like, you don't need to deadlift four to three times a week or two times a week. Just hit your main lifts once a week. Bench squat, deadlift, like hinge, press, row, like all those things should be happening. Lower volume, meaning less sets and reps, but higher intensity. A lot of intention per set, per rep. Really understand what you're trying to achieve. After 40, I like to switch from kind of free weight and back into machines more just because machines give me a chance to be more stable, give me a chance to have some type of feedback to push into, mm. allows me to be in a much more safe environment. I can overload without the same risk of injury because on a free weight, you're having to use your body stabilizing muscles to hold yourself in space. On a machine, you don't have to do that. Like if you do a belt squat RDL versus doing an RDL with a barbell, RDL with a barbell, you have to hold in everything and tighten everything. Whereas on a belt squat RDL, that path of motion is already predetermined. Mm. So I, I can handle a hell of a lot more load on a belt squat RDL than what I would be able to do holding 400 pounds of weight in my hand. So you just start making those types of efficiency improvements. And people are so afraid to go into like, like I can go, I think Planet Fitness is one of the greatest gyms out there because it's literally all machines and Smith machines. I love Smith machines. I love machines. I love selectorized machines because you can really connect to the muscle that you're trying to work, which at the end of the day, like when you're getting older, like you don't really care about being the strongest person in the gym anymore. You just care about looking and feeling your best. Well, what is looking and feeling your best? It's hypertrophy training. I would hypertrophy training is training for muscle mass. It doesn't mean you're going to grow this amazing amount of muscle mass. It just means that you're going to have a much easier time connecting to each movement and then being able to really blow out each movement and progress it. Like you can put five, 10 pounds on a shoulder press machine. You're not going above 105 pounds on, a, on an overhead press unless you have a spot or unless you're really confident. So if you can increase weight and practice progressive overload in a safer environment, why not? Makes sense. Makes total sense. It's definitely a change I'm working on right now. I'm working through it right now. So yeah, I just turned 40 and I just started feeling it. So I've been working through it myself. Oh, you're a year older than I am. I'm knocking on the door at 40. Yeah, yeah. So it's, def it's definitely starting to catch up. It's all right. I mean, I just, I just realized now that like I've left my ego at the door. When I walk into the gym and I got a bunch of young bucks that are training with heavier weight than me, they're still asking me for advice. They're like, why are you pushing your elbow angles this way? Or why are you doing it that way? I'm like, because I'm not trying to, I'm trying to really slow things down and I want to really be able to feel what's being worked. And half the time when they implement that, like I remember two days ago, I was doing an inclined chest press with 70s. Nothing impressive. And the kids next to me were like 15 years younger than I was. And they had like 110 pounds in their hands. You know, and it, it, one kid was having to hold his other arm, buddy's arm up and it looked like somebody was giving birth. And I'm like, you, there's no way your pecs are feeling anything on this movement. Your triceps aren't, it's just, it, it's, it's a front shoulder movement right now and it's a lower back movement for you. So why don't you drop the weight by half and use three seconds up and a second down mm. and just start using real tempo. And he's like, holy shit, I couldn't even do 80s. I'm like, yeah, because you haven't been, pushing any real weight you're just using momentum and you're throwing your body around like a fish do it the right way and you're gonna get a ton out of it that's all it is mm. advice for a coach just starting out feeling overwhelmed to oh easy question just launch launch like the best fucking thing you can do i built a squarespace website by myself the day after i got home from nci level one in 2019 i built the website it was awful. I just figured it out. I And then I, I years later, I hired a web developer to, to change it, which it hasn't changed much. I got LLC through LegalZoom. I, I just did. I, and I just started doing it. Just do it. Like it's reps. Like how do you, how do you get better at a, at a deadlift? You, you do it wrong for a while and you keep doing it until it gets right. You're not going to be a good coach. And let, like, you don't, it's, it's, would you tell your clients to wait for the right time to start? No, you just do it. You do it, you suck at it, and then you get better at it. And if you care, you find out, you take it, take, audit what you suck at and try to figure out where your, where your limitations are as a coach, but just do it. That was the, I think that was one of the best things that came out of the summit was a lot of people that were either part-time coaches, wanted to go full-time, or some people that came that were just lay people, like one of my clients, Lauren, 
she came and she was a coach years ago and she started working for a med spa because it was stable, easy money. And she's like, fuck this. I hate it. I'm unfulfilled. I'm unhappy. And I could provide just the same amount of money and living for my family being a coach, but I just never had the passion for it. And she just, she just recently got back into coaching and she's loving it. Yeah, a lot. I mean, Eve, I couldn't agree with you more. Like so many people got fired up to just like start. Because it's, I mean, it's going to take you years to get good at this, like years. And who cares? Like if you plan on this really being a career, so what? Like I'm almost 40 years old and things are finally starting to happen. Like I've always wanted to be a public speaker. I've always wanted to speak in, in front of people. I got my first opportunity after a $140,000 event that I held. And I didn't do it for that reason. It just happened to be a nice byproduct of it. But like, it took me years. Like, I, I, I mean, I'm still recovering financially from the summit. And it's going to take me a while. Like, I still have to, I don't feel like, I'm still terrified to file my taxes because I know I'm going to have to spend another $20,000 doing that, which is going to be something I'm going to have to beg mommy and daddy for or maybe start an OnlyFans for. But I'll find a way to make it. Like, I'll make the money. Like, you can't be afraid to start. It's scary as shit. Like, being, but like, listen, like at the end of the day, like, let's say you, let's say coaching isn't going the way you wanted it to go and you have to go through some shit times, go fucking drive Uber for oh, three weeks, supplementary, you do whatever you can. Like nobody in this room is void of brains and capability. You'll be able to figure money is easy to make. What do you use for training check-in process to use an app? Uh, <laughs> I'm the wrong person to ask for that. Everything that I do is so manual. I send out a, like a Google form is my check-in form, which is relatively automated. But I do have to remind people. So I do send two emails a week, just reminding people of what when their forms are due. And then for training, uh, I send them the same memes that I make on Instagram for all my textiles. I just build workouts on those things and then they save them as picture files in their phone. Um, I tried using things like trainer eyes and stuff like that before. But the way that I think about it, and maybe this is just my limiting brain, is it's too many other points of contact and then people have to have. It's like they have chronometer for food logging. They have the Google form for the trip for feedback for me. They have my phone number. They have the other phone number. Like there's too many, like you give people too many things on their plate. It's just going to lower compliance at each level. So to me, I'd rather just send them a picture of their workouts and then just shoot them videos of, okay, this is what it's supposed to look like. And either YouTube or videos that you made yourself, or even sometimes I'll go to other people's Instagram pages and just go be like, like go follow Jordan Lips, go follow Lifting Lindsay, go follow Daniel Webster, go follow Paul Carter, go follow Coach Kasim. If these people already have this content made, I'm not going to really reproduce it. So I'm very manual. But the huge point you're making is you're just fucking doing it anyway. Like it doesn't have to be like, pristine bells and whistles everything in this super expensive 200 dollars a month app you're just doing it i mean the most money i spend on like i mean i spend money obviously on squarespace and all that stuff and like i just got i just found out about mailchimp because i'm fucking 100 years old and don't realize what the world really is yet like my web developers like how are you collecting emails i'm like i'm having people dm them to me i'm copying and pasting them and putting in my google she's like you're an idiot um I said, that's why I pay you. And she told me about MailChimp. And then I, because of the pre-sale for the event, I'm like, well, maybe there'd be an easier way to do this. And then I found that, which is free. And now I have MailChimp involved, installed into my thing. And But to me, I don't know. I like the, I like the ability to interface. Like the more, the, if I give you everything and it disconnects you from me and it becomes more app-based, now you're relying, like, you know, we had Nick Shaw on our on our um, podcast the other day. He's one of the co-founders of uh, Renaissance Periodization, RP. And RP is almost all app-based. But mm -hmm. RP is really good because the clients that they serve are pretty self-sufficient already. They don't need all the support. They can have their macros and stuff change dynamically with their behavior. They're on point. They're tracking their food. They're doing all their stuff. Again, when I'm getting 45-year-old Mrs. Jones, who's never been inside of a public gym, who's never tracked a macro, who's never done anything... I want to, I, I don't want to automate anything for her. I want her to have to completely rely and come to me so that we can have those conversations when shit breaks down. Yeah. I mean, the tech stuff can help you to some extent, but I, I don't think it's like this, 
again, if you want to scale, that's the other part. Like I don't like I'm at 70 people. I, I make a decent amount per month. It's it's some some months are better than others, but like I am I I'm on the precipice of scaling. Like I know I have to at some point, but scaling to me doesn't mean more clients. It just means different stuff. Like I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna phase out my two lower price coaching options and just create a curriculum that's gonna be self-taught and self-guided with, you know, maybe a one or two time monthly touch point with me as a Zoom call. And then once you graduate from that, if you still feel like you need accountability and coaching, then that rolls you into my only coaching option, which will make it very easy. Like, I don't know how Eve does it. I'm sure Eve, Eve does it a little bit differently than me. What I found was Squarespace is your website, Acuity is your scheduling, and Stripe is your payment system. And they all live very nicely together. I can give you a web developer that's really great, who's not super expensive, the girl that I... and. She built everything. She she and she's so good and she's so responsive. And she'll just she'll basically talk you through like what you what are you missing? What do you need? How can I help? And then let the professionals on that side do what they're gonna do. Learn a little bit about it. Like have her send you some loom videos on what she's doing. So you can maybe like if you have to go in there and change some stuff on your own, you're not completely lost. Like I want to change the price on something in my I don't want to have to rely on her to have to do it. I can just go into Squarespace and figure it out myself. But yeah, Squarespace is your hosting website. Acuity is the capability to create subscription pricing, but you can do that through Stripe also. And Acuity is a, Acuity is a scheduling platform that's connected to Squarespace. I don't really use it for scheduling, but you can. Um, but all those integrations are very seamless and the web developers that she is, she knows how to use all that stuff. So that's very easy. I mean, again, everybody does it a thousand different ways. So there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just whatever works. <clears throat> Any last questions, guys? I think we got everything in the chat. Yeah, and if anything ever, if anything comes up or maybe you were shy or you didn't want to ask in public, whatever it is, like DM is always open. Just shoot me a message. Let me know what's up. And if I can help, I will. Like I'm, I'm not the best resource for when it comes to business stuff. And I'll just be very transparent about that. Like it works for me. I'm sure there's a thousand better ways to do it, but you know, I, like I, I, and don't be afraid of like spending money, by the way, like, I don't know if anybody ever worries about this. And I know some, most of you have families and people depending on you, but don't be afraid to like take out a credit card and put yourself into a little bit of debt to get some of this stuff done. Like, I know like the cash, like sometimes you just don't have the cash to spend on this shit. And that's what me keeps you apprehensive of putting systems in or hiring this person or streamlining this process. We definitely wrote off most of our gym. So, so oh yeah you're right yeah we yeah, definitely... if you guys are using your home gym to record for your clients you can write that stuff oh. your shoes your clothes your supplements your coaching with anybody else like whenever i like i hired a coach for the year it was a mentor fucking they don't know like again i spend i just bought my girlfriend a pair she wanted a pair of nikes and it was her late birthday present i spent 136 bucks on camouflage nike high tops we're close good luck trying to prove it i don't make enough money to be a red flag and i'm not writing off if i make 150 i'm not writing off 275 like be smart about it like don't be completely unreasonable and if you have a decent account and they'll tell you the same thing they know how to toe the line just let them toe the line for you and just give them, if you give them information and just let them work with it, they'll figure it all out. They know how to do that. Um, but I, I just, I would, if you're going to spend any money on anything, spend money on a good accountant. They'll make you money back at some point. They do. <laughs> Especially the, the bigger you grow, the more you need it. Well, this has been awesome, Aram. I appreciate all your transparency, your advice, everything. I mean, you're just an all-around great person. Truly. Thank you. I I appreciate the opportunity to come on. I it's still alarming to me that people actually care what I have to say, but I'll figure it out. It's I'll yeah. I'll, I'll lose my imposter syndrome at one point. Everybody has it. Oh, we, it's... we truly care, and someone cared and loved you enough to duplicate you. So. I know. If they send you feet pics, they're not mine. <laughs> I don't give that shit out for free. That'll be for your OnlyFans. <laughs> yes. Yeah, which is going to be live in three hours, considering how much money I owe. <laughs> <laughs>
still so trying I'm, to get like guys like what he said was definitely true like if you guys need anything you have a question you need a piece of advice a sounding board whatever he is the person behind the dms answering the dms and he will get back to you he is a live person a great person um so if you need anything like he's legit yeah and if you want to get connected to anybody or if you want to like if you feel like you you know you're shy with public speaking or you want to like do some stuff and you want to get on a podcast like we invite all sorts of people on our podcast we had we had a movie producer on our podcast we have clients on our podcast we have other coaches on our podcast so if you just feel like you need the floor and just vent i would reach out and be like hey let's jump on a podcast sure we'll invite you on everybody has something to say Well, cool. Thank you so much for being here today. You guys know where to find him on Instagram. We'll get the replay up. Um, if you didn't miss all of the gems and nuggets in the beginning, but I can't wait to see you again at some point, some point in real life. I'm sure something will probably happen this year and we'll be at that event. Um, but if you guys didn't go to the Real Coaches Summit for 2024, you've got to be there. But thank you again for being here today. I appreciate it. I appreciate and you too. We got to get a lift in at some point, my man, Randall. We'll <laughs> uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll get all your big deadlifting out of the way. I'll just Absolutely. teach you. I'll teach you how to do really, really heavy, slow RDLs, and you'll never have to touch a barbell ever again. Hey, let's get it. I'll never turn down a good lift. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're eating afterwards, though. Immediately. Oh afterwards. yeah. Anabolic hey. window and such. Yeah, we got to make sure we keep it inside of that. <laughs> and we'll probably drink because Lord knows I can't say no to that. Right, right. All right, folks. Well, I appreciate it. If anybody needs anything, you know where to find me. Eve, I appreciate the platform as always. Um, and you guys are in good company here. You're in a, you have one of the, you probably have the gold standard of coaching that's leading you the, through this all. So you should feel really good about it. There's really not much people, there are not many people out there that I would think are doing it better than you are. So you're, you found the right place. I appreciate it. Thank you. What did I tell you, you guys, this episode was so awesome so great definitely make sure you guys go and follow aram his handle is four with the digit four weeks two two is the number two the beach four weeks to the beach let him know that you heard this podcast today and ask him anything you want he's an open book i really encourage you guys to ask him um anything that you're wanting to just you know kick around the ball on if you heard this episode and you're like, man, macro mentorship is something that I would like to be a part of where I have guest speakers coming in every month, make sure you guys go to gtransformationacademy.com backslash certification to get on the wait list. And we'll talk to you guys next time on the Macros for Life podcast. Thanks for listening to our podcast today. Make sure you like, share, and tag us on Instagram. Also, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future episodes. In the meantime, be healthy and get welcome.